Well, hey, Mechatronic students. We're taking a look at the FANUC robot today and uh, talking about robotic safety. So this robot is set up now and it's running in automatic mode. Um, these robots have one of two operational modes, uh, teaching mode and automatic mode. So in automatic mode, it just runs through a program repeatedly. And, you know, we may have other devices connected to it that uh, like a, a PLC or some other equipment where it might be waiting for a signal to in order to start. So if it's in automatic mode, it could be running continuously like we're seeing here, or it could be paused and fooling you. So um, we gotta be cautious when working around robots because they're blind and stupid. Uh, it doesn't necessarily know that you're in, a, in the way of something. You could get pinched in between the robot and some tooling. So uh, always be careful when working around these units. Now that said, they, they do have some ability to detect people within a work cell. So this one is using a laser scanner at the bottom of the robot to detect the presence of people. And if I get too close to the machine, it clicks and stops. So there's a laser scanner at the bottom of the machine here that is uh, basically looking for the presence of people. So let's take a peek at that machine, the uh, laser scanner itself. There it is on the underside of the robot. That's where this laser scanner is located. So there's the robot itself up top and directly underneath it is this laser scanning unit. Now, <laughs> What it uses is a uh, infrared light and it's sending that out and it's got a little deflector mirror inside of there and it's constantly scanning back and forth and back and forth um, looking for any uh, interruptions uh, from normal. So as I get closer to this unit, you'll see that it's turning red and as I back away from it, it has a green light. So the output of this laser scanner is being fed into the robot's controller and stopping the robot when somebody gets too close. So they call this design a fenceless robot. Okay, so typically robots are inside of cages and they're inside of cages to keep the people out. Those cages that define the work area are sometimes called the robot's work cell. So they are actually some of the best barriers that are out there for keeping people out of the robot's work area are physical barriers like fences, right? And they're typically like a high visibility yellow color, something like that. And we can see um, the back of this robot has some plexiglass. So the back area is protected with the plexiglass here and a little bit of framing materials. So people standing behind here would be safe from it. And that laser scanner is going out and scanning about a 270 degree arc um, out directionally, uh, trying to prevent people from um, possibly becoming injured by the robot. So a couple of other safety features that would be out there that aren't shown on this robot would be door interlocks, those fenced off areas typically use an interlock device. And I have one that's pulled off of another piece of equipment, but it's a door interlock, a mechanical switch that when a door slides shut, this uh, key element would be on the door and the switch contact would be mounted on the frame. So as it slides open and closed, it interlocks and um, the door would have to be shut when it, the robot's operating in its automatic mode. So on occasion, this is not a good thing, by the way, um, I've seen maintenance folks will remove the key for the interlock from the door and just put it in there. And now the door can open and close without the interlock getting in the way. That's a rotten deal. That is bypassing a safety mechanism on the machine. And it's a huge problem. So uh, that leaves that machine, the robot, whatever it is, open for opportunity for you know, safety problems. So it's a bad habit to disable or bypass any sort of safety interlock devices 
on equipment like this. Um, <clears throat> so don't do that. Uh, a couple other features that you might find as far as some safety devices around robotic cells would be light curtains. And you can think about those uh, very similar to like a um, electric garage door opener. They, they have a through beam sensor on the bottom of the door, at least they should. And you know, if the door is closing and you walk in there, you'll break that beam and the door pops back up. So they have similar mechanisms, light curtains that have, instead of a single beam across the bottom, they have many, many beams across two uh, in emitter and receiver unit. And you're allowed to uh, break through that beam to load parts into the work cell, but the only way the robot's going to run is if, those, uh, if that light beam is um, not blocked. You know, nobody's inside of the beam itself. Parts aren't sticking inside of there. So um, they're another fantastic safety device. And again, it could be bypassed, uh, but that's a rotten idea. You know, so never ever bypass safety devices. Um, other ones will use pressure sensitive mats. So very similar to where the old school doors, uh, if you remember going into like a grocery store, they may have had mats that when you stepped on, the door opened. Uh, that's gone away now with other devices that sense you from above. But similar idea, they have safety mats that are located around the work cell area. And then anybody that's inside there that steps on that, it would send a signal to the processor and say, hey, there's a person here. We can't run in automatic mode. Uh, another safety device would be anti-tie-down switches. So in order to start a machine or sometimes to keep it going, the operator has to have their hands or um, fingers inside of these start buttons. So they have a little photo eye inside of here that um, if you break that with your finger, uh, it sends a start switch to the processor. So there the operator would have to step outside of the work cell and press these or put their hands and fingers inside of the start switches. Then the robot can start up. So the advantage of that is, at least for the startup sequence, you know that the operator is a distance away from the machine and you know where their hands are and they're not anywhere near an area that could be in harm's way. So those are some of the different safety devices that are out there. Um, these safety devices are only employed when the robot's operating in what we call automatic mode. So I was running this robot in the beginning. It was just cycling through things, running through its program. So I'll get that running once more. So this is a, an example of automatic mode. And to engage that, I just have to press the little green push button at the bottom of the robot. And it's going to run through. I can increase the speed here a little bit. OK, so in automatic mode, the robot runs at full speed. And <clears throat> all of the safety mechanisms, light curtains or interlock switches, all of those things are employed. So in the event that someone enters the work cell, gets too close to the robot, it's gonna shut down. So, and again, we can demonstrate that as I get too close here. Oh, it stopped. So that was the laser scanner once again, detecting my legs uh, underneath the machine here. The other mode of operation for this robot is what's called a uh, teaching mode. So to talk about that, I'm going to click over here to the bottom of the robot and show you the controller unit. Okay, so there's the controller unit. We can see the emergency stop and then we have automatic mode and T1 mode showing over here. And that's teaching mode. And you'll see down here it says less than 250 millimeters per second. In teaching mode, T1 mode, that is the fastest that the robot can operate. So um, it's going to run considerably slower in teaching mode than it does in automatic mode. And that's because in teaching mode, all of the 
um, safety interlocks, safety like door switches and light curtains and laser sensors. <coughs> Sorry, all of those devices are disabled. So when you're in teaching mode, um, the robot runs slower and the safety devices are basically disabled. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like over here on the robot. Um, so to put it in teaching mode, let me back up just one second. There's automatic mode. It's got a little key switch here. And it's keyed because typically uh, in production, these keys may not be in the robot. Only the maintenance folks would have these keys and be able to switch it from automatic mode into teaching mode. So you got to know what you're doing here to get it into teaching mode. So that's one of the first things we do is flip the switch here into teaching mode. Then the second thing we're going to do is go to the teach pendant itself. So here's our teach pendant and it has an on off switch up here. So right now it's in a off position and we can turn the switch to on position. And <clears throat> now the teach pendant is active. Um, in order to be in teach mode or automatic mode, both emergency stops have to be pulled out. And there's one on the, the teach pendant and there's one on the controller itself in this case. Uh, other equipment might have them uh, throughout the work cell. But these e-stops are a push to engage and then a twist to get it to pop out. So you can see a little error message up here on the teach pendant. You always want to pay attention to this top line here. It's going to give us lots of valuable information. In this case, it says teach pendant e-stop is pressed. And I can basically twist this to get it to pop up. And then I want to clear those faults. So clearing faults oftentimes involves hitting shift and reset. And that uh, e-stop fault went away, but the fault light is still on. So in teaching mode, the only way the robot is going to run and be able to move around is if I press the dead man switch. So I uh, hit the shift and reset, and it, they got a little error message here that said dead man switch released. Okay. Well, the dead man switch, let's talk about that. On the back of the teach pendant, we have these switches. Two of them, for one for left and right hand operators. And the switch has three positions. So it's normal state when no one's pressing it. Um, I, what I call a center position. And then it has a third position here where it's fully closed. So the idea behind the dead man switch is that if we were pinched by the robot or something is happening inside the cell and it you know, ran into us, one of our reactions is going to be to release the switch with our hand. The other is going to be to, to uh, basically seize up and have a reaction where our body is going to have a reaction to tighten our grip on things. And both will trigger the dead man switch. So in order for me to use the teach pendant to get the robot to drive around, what I have to do is first of all, um, typically we put our hand inside of the teach pendant like this and we press the dead man switch to its center position, not its last click, just one click in and then shift and reset. When we did that, all of the, uh, all the errors went away. We do not have that red fault light on anymore. So at this point, we are able to jog the robot around. All right, and uh, I'll uh, switch camera angle so you can see the robot jogging around. Okay, so here I'm moving the Z axes up and down. And this is set at the maximum speed, 100% speed. So it's moving quite a bit slower in teaching mode than it did in automatic mode. So this is by design so that um, the motions are more predictable. Uh, the slower things move, the safer they are. 
So if I'm trying to write programs, um, move the robot to a certain spot to do some maintenance work on it, this is the mode in teaching mode that we would do that in. So we'll get more familiar with all of the different buttons on here. But in order to make it move, what I have to be doing with the teach pendant, I'll show you this up close. Oops, wrong button. Okay. So in order to make the robot move when it's in teaching mode, I have to, number one, press the dead man switch to the center position. Hit the shift key and then hit the reset key. The fault went away and we are ready to jog the robot around. So all of the safety features on the robot are disabled when it's in this teaching mode. So the laser, um, the laser is not worried about me. I can be inside the work cell, um, jogging the robot around, doing what I need to do. Um, but light curtains, door interlocks, you can be inside of the robot cell, getting up close and personal with the robot when you're in teaching mode. So you can't do that when you're in automatic mode. So the differences between the two, um, automatic mode, all of your safety devices are active and trying to sense is the door open, uh, is someone inside the work cell, you know, and if that's the case, the robot's going to shut down. When it's in teaching mode, those devices are disabled and technically only the person with the teach pendant in hand should be allowed inside of that work cell because they've got some control. They're able to let go of the dead man switch and stop the robot's action. They're able to predict by using the buttons. They know which way it's going to be traveling. So the rule here is that only the person with the teach pendant in hand is allowed to be uh, close to the robot when it's operating in this teach mode. And also in teach mode, everything is slower. So you have more predictable and safer actions with the robot. So we'll learn more about all these different commands about jogging the robot around and how to run uh, create programs, things like that in, in future videos. But for right now, I want us to be able to turn the robot on, be able to go from manual mode into teaching mode and understand the differences, what's happening with our safety devices um, when you're in those two different modes. So that's a great place for us to start our robot safety class and we'll catch you guys next time.